All right, John Hamm is here celebrating the 10-year anniversary of when he let Affleck get away in the town. <laughs> God knows what that dude's doing in Florida, what kind of robberies he's planning. <laughs> What if he's just like chilling? What if he's like, he became like an old dude? He's like, I don't know. He's wearing some Bermuda shorts. He's got a fun hat. He's got like a tiny grapefruit orchard. He just like, I think, he's like feeling it. I think that's what they wanted us to think at the end, that all the uh, the cop shootings and the bank robbers were behind him. And now he just wanted to coach a little league team in Florida. Exactly. He got it out of his system. He's got a, <laughs> he's got a strong, you know, that's a lot of, like a lot of uh, Cuban American uh, immigrants that are of questionable age, and he's he's got a strong uh, little league team there. <laughs> uh, I'm catching you during a Zoom junket, and Zoom junket, man. In the old days, say. you have a new you have new movie out called Wild Mountain Time. Um, in the old days, you had been flying around. You would have done the LA thing. You'd done the New York thing. Um, we're, doing a, we're doing a walk and talk. We're doing like a Aaron. Yeah, Stoker now you can do a thing. walk and talk, but you get to you get to promote the movie from your own house and just oh, stay I'm on Zoom you. all day and do a bunch of interviews. I'm in sweatpants. I'm in. I get to drink coffee. I'm like, this is my dog is fully asleep on his little uh, dog bed. Uh, you know, it's 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 all of the getting up early in the morning and none of the like having to put on a suit and wear hair and makeup and do all the nonsense in some weird room in some weird hotel that you just want to not be in. Um, since the last time we talked, a lot of stuff has happened in sports, um, including me getting voted out of our fantasy league. So I didn't even get to see you this year for the draft. Um, I know you were delighted to see me voted out. You got voted out, I think like five, six years ago. Was it that um, long ago? Something like that. You showed up late. We were waiting for you. You arrived. <laughs> you you ordered a beer. You sat down. And within three minutes, it was over. This one was weird because we had the pandemic. I just kind of got voted out on, on email. And that was it. I didn't even feel like I got the money well, shot you, out of it. But now you say like you say I was late, like I was like being irresponsible. I was late because I was coming from shooting Mad Men. So I was rushing down Sunset Boulevard. I took right. you know, shot downtown. I'm like gotta be like I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm perennially on time I'm like a crazy punctual person and like I so I'm rushing to make the thing and we're in some weird place on sunset and upstairs in some private room yes. it wasn't even a private room it was like an upstairs like non-used space and yeah I sat down I got Budweiser and they're like you're out like, okay well, there we go let's, let's put it all away and like it was unbelievable. I I was so bad. I was like, you voted on him? What the hell? Um, yeah, so I'm out so that we don't get the whole fantasy thing. But I I I started my I started a keeper league. Now I'm I'm coming back next year. I I claimed I was quitting, but I'm not. I'm coming I back. I know. I you can't it's you're you're uh, you're Al Pacino. Every time you say you're out, they put pulls you back in. Yeah. I um I'm in way too many leagues this year. Like my friend from us it's because of pandemic, everyone wanted to be in wanted to do something yeah and the nfl actually had a version of a season was like okay i guess we're doing this although you know it's it's funny when when they they're like oh the broncos don't have any quarterbacks tough shit you're playing anyway and then like oh lamar jackson's out let's move that game uh we're gonna need to move that game a couple of times uh yeah, they, they can't decide whether to be punitive or helpful. It really depends on the situation and how people got COVID. I think it depends on your record, honestly. Yeah. Like, you know, if you're if you're ten and zero, then you get a little leeway, and if uh, you have the former MVP, then you get a little leeway. And if you're the Broncos, peace sayonara. Out. Yeah, the Broncos <laughs> thing that felt like how, a sports oh, man, movie. Can you imagine? Can you imagine being whoever the guy was, like starting at the at quarterback at the NFL having taken exactly zero snaps ever it's like it's the worst version of Rudy like right. where you're just or or paper lion like right it's like they might as well have put George Plimpton in there like it was just there's just no version of that where that's successful I, well, I no there is a version there, there it would have been a sports movie where everything could be successful in a sports movie. He comes exactly. in, he's he probably, he has some baggage in the back. You know, sure. It's like, he's For got sure. some skeleton in the closet. He's hoping yeah. never comes out, but he has a successful game. Then the backlash, and then he has to get through it. And there's the woman sure. who's believed For him the sure. whole time. But, yeah, somebody read it. But in reality, the guy goes one for 26 <laughs> and, and gets his head torn off. Like, yeah. That's what the real version of that is. So you, you, 
last time you were on, we talked about this, but we can go over it quickly because things have changed. You were, you're a St. Louis guy. Yes, that has changed. And the Rams come back and then the Rams leave and they come to LA and then you're kind of nomad. And then the Chiefs win. You kind of glommed onto the Chiefs thing a little bit. I saw what you were doing. Hey, it was a glom listen, on. It's, it's still a Missouri team. I have every right to jump onto that bandwagon. I, I, that's not like me all of a sudden becoming a Lions fan. Right. It, um, so, yeah, I mean, I, I remember I said this exact phrase to Roger Goodell at some Super Bowl a couple years ago. I was like, you know, you've successfully taken two franchises from my hometown. Mm. Like, what are we going to do about this? And he kind of laughed and patted me on the back and got in a limo, which I think was <laughs> exactly the right response. He's like, I love Mad Men. I'll I see love you later. Mad Men. Bye. Yeah, great job. Great job on the show. <laughs> Yeah, I think the Missouri thing, I don't know. I I, I know you have some Kansas City friends. They were okay yes. with it? They were okay with, with welcoming you to the, what to am the I supposed bandwagon? To like, uh, you know, I mean, I, uh, there's 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 very few options. I'm not going to be a Bears fan. Yeah. Uh, then the other, I guess, closest team would be like Tennessee. So you didn't want to go, you didn't want to go L.A.? You didn't want to follow them to LA where you, where you, you live. Know, the thing about the, the thing about the Rams is I, I, I grew up in the seventies. We're about the same age. I'm, I'm assuming like they yeah. were always the LA Rams to me, even when they were yeah. the St. Louis Rams. Like, I don't know. I, I still think of the, of the Colts as the Baltimore Colts. I, I don't know. Yeah. Like I'm, I'm just, that's my era. Um, you know, I, I was a Cardinal fan way longer than they stayed in St. Louis. I rooted for them in Arizona. And then that was a, that franchise has had it rough, but when they went to the Super Bowl, I was super happy. You know, they almost won. That was such a good Super Bowl when they almost came back. I think we watched that at Kimmel's, didn't we? Yeah, yeah. yeah. The St. Uh, Louis one back against uh, against um, Pittsburgh, right? It was a great one. The St. Louis Cards had a nice little run there in the seventies. Yeah, it is weird. I, 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 people think the Rams left St. Louis, but then you had. Another team that has to be at least tied for the record. It's losing two be. teams. I don't think I, there's who else has that? New York, maybe. I don't know. Like, yeah, that's uh, it. So they so they welcomed you. And were you with? Were you in the Paul Rudd suite when the Chiefs yeah, won? When everybody he, was crying, it sounded emotional. He was well. He was there with his 15 year old son, and yeah. you know, it's like the first time you win any championship. I was 11, uh, 12 when the Cardinals won the '82 World Series, which was my first time seeing any team I care about win a championship and it's yeah. just like you don't know what to do you know when you're when you're that young you're crazy and he was so emotional uh, both Paul and his son yeah uh, it was it was just so sweet like it was such a pure kind of like moment of fan and family and father son and and I, what I loved about Paul's son Jack was he was wearing a a uh, I can't remember the guy's name, but he's the doctor that was the Chiefs lineman who who opted out this year. Uh, Duvernay Tardif, right? That, that was the jersey he chose. He didn't go Mahomes. He didn't go Kelsey. Wow. He had Duvernay Tardif. <laughs> which I was like, right on, dude. Cool move. That was such a cool way to win the Super Bowl too, where they where it looked grim. It was like third and nineteen or whatever, and Mahomes made like one of the great plays in Super Bowl history. To I mean, the kid to is make it happen. He's magic, man. He is magic. Like it's it's uh, it was it was a, it was definitely a, the the tonic we needed after the snooze fest of the, the Super Bowl the previous year. Oh my God! Yeah, it's funny. You know, I obviously think Brady is the goat for a variety of reasons and he certainly had the best career and he's come through the most times, but Mahomes is just clearly the most talented quarterback ever. So it's, if he could just stay healthy, it's going to happen. It is. He'll, he'll it be is, the goat. Right. I mean, there it is. It's like, you know, what if, what if Barry Sanders played on a team with a, any kind of offensive line, like he could have had 400,000 rushing yards. Like right. you just never know. So hopefully they'll, They'll keep uh, they'll keep the talent around him and keep him safe. But uh, look, I mean, it's uh, ostensibly illegal to hit the quarterback now. So I think that you know, barring any any uh, barring any you know fluke, he'll be he'll be fine. He's also like a super good dude. I've met him a couple times. He's like the nicest kid. Like clearly has great parents. Like I raised the right way. Like he's just a good dude. Yeah, it's funny. He's the only QB who really it seems unfair sometimes. Where. <laughs> 
It's like third and 12. The defense does everything correctly. And then five seconds into the play, is like, cool. And he just runs for 14 <laughs> yards, goes out of bounds, doesn't get touched. And you're just like, all right, come on. It's the, yeah. like the opposite of the Jets defense. Like if the defense does <laughs> right. everything right and they still get boned, that's like that's facing Mahomes. You know, say you haven't been on the pod since this movie came out, but we talked about it. But I thought we could just talk about it again here. The uh, So Beirut came out and mm-hmm. it was really good. Mm-hmm. And I said to you after, I was like, that movie was really good. What happened? How does... What's the process of a movie not finding the audience it should have found? And you were like, that's happened to me a couple of times. It sucks. But yeah, I mean, this I'm, is I'm just the king, way it goes. I'm the king of being in movies that people are like, hey, man, I saw that movie on the airplane. It was really good. You're really good. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah. Because Million Dollar Arm was like that for us, too, where people yeah. found it. And, they, and it was like. Oh, I love that movie. I when did it come out? It's like, yeah, thanks. Well, it came out within the case of Million Dollar Arm. It came out on the same weekend as like Godzilla or something. It was literally got or Avengers. Yeah, at yeah. The, somebody at the box killed office. It. Like it was right. just there was no room. Um, and Beirut was just you know it's an independent film. Like it's a small movie. Like um, I did a movie like that called the uh, the Torture Report that or the Report that was with Annette Benning and Adam Driver and everybody. It was another great film. Like. It just, we're in a world where you're either in a $200 million movie or you're not in a movie. Like that's kind of how it works. And then you, the, 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 it has to kind of get sifted through all of the other stuff to, 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 for people to find it. And eventually people do. Um, I, I, you know, I think I'm so proud of Beirut. Like we shot that thing in six weeks in Morocco in a hundred degree heat during Ramadan it was it was a rough one summer of 2016 so like trump was ascending there was all this madness in the world there was a coup in turkey like half of our crew got stuck and it was bonkers like but we made this beautiful film and and um and it's kind of relevant now especially given given what's going on so yeah i mean you know not not to make the world's clumsiest segue but it's a little bit like wild mountain time like we made this movie in ireland it seemingly out of time we were in this beautiful place in Ireland that was just so peaceful and lovely and blustery and Irish and there's rainbows and you're just like, are you kidding me? This is like beautiful. And then six months later, the world is locked down. <laughs> right. It's awful. And then the movie comes out and it's, and it's this beautiful kind of like love story that it's sort of the perfect balm for the terrible year that 2020 has been. So hopefully people will see it. You know, I look at, we We've got more ways than ever to consume entertainment now, and it's and it's harder than ever to find something that you want to watch. I mean, how many times have you gone through Netflix and just been like, mm. you know, I don't want to want to want to. I don't know what I want to watch. I don't know what I want to watch. I feel like I've seen every movie now. <laughs> I, I've seen. <laughs> has all that been them. your? Has that been your pandemic? <laughs> like you've just really been like. I just plowing through. through. Stuff? I'm plowing through everything. I'm like in the '70s now, just plowing through '70s hey, man. movies. Good. Um, Good. I think the thing you mentioned though about when movies get lost, it feels like that that's going to start to flip as people go to streaming now. And you need like even what happened with HBO Max where they're just like, "Yeah, we're just going to put all all the Warner movies on HBO Max." And maybe that's where we're heading where you know, like a I movie like Man- sure. like Manchester by the Sea is a good example, right? Where those are the kind of movies that people don't make anymore. Right, and it feels like that's actually the kind of movie that people should be making now. If you're Amazon, Netflix, whoever, because it's well, like and, and 15, 20 make, million, and you bang and it out. And that's who's making them. I mean, that's exactly who's making them. You know, we're we're gonna uh, we're rebooting Fletch, right? So we're we've got the the rights to the the novels. There was eleven novels that Gregory McDonald wrote, and we're we're gonna do our own take on it. It's we're not trying to imitate Chevy Chase, and it's you know. We're, it's going to be what it is. And and so we're excited to make this movie, but you know, it's like in, in, in a normal time that would, you would take that to Paramount or Warner brothers or wherever and say like, Hey, we got this great idea. And they'd go, great. Here's $40 million. Go make it. And now it's kind of like, they're not in that business anymore. They're just yeah. not. Um, so it's, it's, no, he would have to be a superhero or something. Or exactly. Superpower. Like, yeah, or, 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 or a comic, it's some kind of like graphic novel adaptation. There has to be a, you know, IP that, that people identify with, which it kind of is, but like they still, it's, that's just not the business that they're in anymore. So, so it's fallen to the, the streamers. 
Yeah. Um, you know, you either make a movie for $5 million, like Wild, Wild Mountain Time or, or $1 million, or you make a movie for $250 million. <laughs> like that's, that's the, that's how wide the, the chasm is between those things. And, you know, I think, I think it's a bummer. I think that there's a world where those mid range stories, I mean, the town's a perfect example. Like the Warner brothers made the town in 2009 and we made that for 30 something million dollars. And it was seen as a huge risk. You're right. But you also have like $280 million like wrapped up in, you know, the Lone Ranger or whatever, you know, whatever thing that you're trying to reboot. And, and, and yet here we are like, so I don't know if I like, like a lot of things. I, re- I wish I ran the, uh, I wish I ran the world so I could make decisions, but I don't get to do that. We did a rewatchables about Fletch. I'm going to say like five, six months ago. And when we do that, we do a lot of, I do a lot of research for it, try to find out history of things, stuff like that. Uh-huh. There were a lot of reboots attempted. And oh, yeah, it's, sure. it's like this checkered history of people going, taking it to the one yard line and then things falling apart or they had this and Kevin Smith was like really yeah, involved. Kevin at Smith one point. was on it for a long time. There, there were a lot of people that really wanted to, to redo it because it's, as you saw, if you rewatched it recently and I watched it recently again, too, it's funny. Yeah. And the character's funny. It's like, he's kind of this, you know, why wouldn't you want to see more of that? Like, I remember when the sequel came out and everyone was like, this is going to be awesome. And then you were like, oh, they did what they used to do with sequels, which is like, make more of the stuff you didn't want to see and less of the stuff that you did. Sequel's brutal. Yeah, it's a tough one. It's It, it was a really fun rewatch. And it it's Chevy Chase basically saying, I'm just going to be a wise ass dick, but somehow you're going to like me as the hero of the movie, which nobody really does anymore. It was kind of like he kind of invented it almost. But well, unfortunately, I think that is maybe who he became over the course of time. I, I, th- I think, I think, yeah, that, <laughs> that, that sadly was the coda to that uh, story. But, um, but no, he was, he was charming and, you know, irreverent. There you go. Like that's, that's a, that's a pretty good combination of, of, of things. So yeah, it's, um, we're, we're trying to find some of that, you know, we're, we're, what we're really trying to do with the reboot is, is get to a, a, a much more of the, a place where the novels were, which is he's he's charming and irreverent, but he's also he's less that goofy kind of prat folly fall down, get your head stuck in a light fixture kind of guy, and more yeah. of a more more intellectual in his approach. You know, the the uh, the book that we're adapting actually originally took place in Boston, but we're moving it to New York for whatever reasons, and. Um, and there's more of a... Because you hate Boston. Why don't you just be honest? We fucking kicked your ass in the World Series. That's why you moved it. Just be honest. Listen, I, we can talk about how many championships our respective b- baseball teams have. And I, <laughs> I will still come on, out on top. You know, you had a good run. You had a nice run. We had a nice 20-year run. And it feels yeah. like it's over. Do you, well, I mean, do we want to talk about, uh, you know, maybe stealing signs or anything? But eh, we don't need to talk nah, No, no. There's been no, no proof. <laughs> proof. <laughs> Um, anyways, yeah. So, you know, there's, there's a lot of, of, there's a lot of stuff like the, there's nine novels worth of this character and it's, yeah. I remember reading them as a kid and I, after I saw Fletch whenever I was 85. So I was like a teenager and I thought, and I was, I didn't know they made movies out of books. I didn't know that was a thing. Like I just thought yeah. they made movies and there were movies and books. And I was in a bookstore once and I saw like the thing, you know, the novelization where they had Fletch and the picture from the thing. I was like, oh, that's cool. And then I was thumbing through and they're like, here's other books with Fletch. And I was like, whoa, there's other books with this guy. And there's one where he goes to Rio and there's one where he goes to, you know, wherever. And so I was like, I immediately like acquired all of those books and, and read them. And I was like, oh, wow, there's so many more stories. I can't wait for Hollywood to make more of these. And then they made that sequel and I was like, well, they, I hope they don't make any more of these. Well, the author did something interesting. He had control over how they did the movies, which, you know, just about any author doesn't think to do that. So he's like vetoing potential stars yeah. and, yeah. you know, was very protective over the IP, which was pretty cool. Which was why it was, it was really cool that his estate let us do this. Um, yeah. We, we got, we got permission and, you know, that's a, that's a big a big deal and big part of it to get the kind of blessing where you, 
yeah. you can move forward. And, and, you know, we got Greg Matola directing, who's awesome. And, and he's rewriting the script and we've got a bunch of people that we think are going to be pretty I'm excited for so hopefully, it. Yeah. Hopefully, you know, fingers crossed. Have you found during the uh, pandemic streaming era when everybody's just binge watching whatever they can is, is Mad Men getting a second life yet? Cause it's been, I don't oh, know, for sure. what, 15 years since the first 15 season? 15 years since Four- the pilot. Yeah. yeah. Um, the interesting thing was, I guess sometime around March or April, so like early lockdown, uh, the deal with Netflix expired. Mm. So there was this whole like wave of people like, oh shit, it's leaving Netflix. We got to like, we got to watch it before it goes, wherever it goes. I think it's on Amazon now or something. But um, so yeah, like <laughs> the, the, the funniest, the funniest story was uh, I got a, I got a text Again, deep pandemic, deep lockdown from Andy Samberg, who's like, hey, man, I just, uh, how you doing? How's it going? Blah, blah, blah. And I was like, okay. I'm good, man. Everything's good. You know, hope you're good. He's got a little baby at home. I was like, hope everybody's healthy. You know, just kind of riding it out here. And he's like, I got to tell you, man, I really been, I've really been getting into Mad Men. I, I, I never could tell you over the years, but I never watched it. And I was like... <laughs> Yeah, why would that hurt your feelings? Yeah, I'm like, that's fine. Like, I don't, I don't, it's not like you lied to me and said, like, yeah, yeah, yeah whatever. Um, but you did host the Emmys when I won and <laughs> tell me how great I was, but whatever. Um, but he's like, no, no, I'm, I'm, you know, I just never got around to it. And, you know, me and Joanna, his wife, were like, we're just really like, we, I've been so into it. Like, I was like, well, yeah, it's kind of engenders that kind of watching. Like, once you get into it, you really get into it. He's like, no, I just got to tell you, like, I've been, so that was a, you know, I've had a few versions of that where people have just been like, I can't tell you, oh my God, I never, I never finished it or I never like, you know, whatever. And I just been watching it. And I, I've definitely had a lot of people, my version of that has been the Sopranos. Like, yeah, uh, I, I went, I went back and, and started watching the Sopranos from the beginning. And I'm just like, holy moly, man, this show, it's so good. And he's so good. And everybody's so good in it. And the story's so compelling. And it just, it's like a slow motion car crash. You know, you just see where it's going and you think, I know how this ends. I know how this ends and it's not good. But it's I so did compelling. that before the pandemic and just threw myself into it. And it was so much fun. Did the same thing with The Wire. I've been saving Mad Men. The cool thing about Mad Men is because it's confined to an era, it's never dated, right? Because you see yeah. some of these, like The Sopranos, there's a couple of moments where you're like, ah, that's a little dated, but it's still fun. Right. That's a, little, you, that's a little when you when you're rooted in the in the fifties and sixties, it that's it. It just becomes it timeless. It yeah, exactly. And especially because the show the show's attention to detail was so specific and so um complete that you're never kind of pulled out of that. It's never like, Oh, well, there's a guy with a weird haircut. Like, why would he be there? Like that doesn't make sense. Like we had I remember during the show there were a couple of you know, kind of like hangers on and whatever it was Pan Am or some, you know, version of shows that were trying to kind of piggyback on the success. And it was like, yeah, good luck to them. It doesn't work unless you go all in. Like you have to like really, you know, you can't, but whatever, give Margot Robbie a career. So they have, (laughs) Oh, is that, was she on that one? I forgot. Yeah. Yeah. Um, When you did this new movie, did you just want to go to Ireland for four months or did you like the script? Was it, what was it? 50, 50? It wasn't 50, 50. Like I, I, the Ireland stuff was a complete bonus. Like yeah. for me, it was working with John Patrick Shanley who, who did you know, Moonstruck and Joe versus the volcano and all this other stuff. He is a, a hero of mine and I've, mm. I've had met him a couple times. He's like a, he's a quintessential New York guy, Irish Catholic, like the whole thing wears his heart on his sleeve. He's an amazing writer, amazing creative force. And I've loved his work. And I'd seen the play that this movie was based on. And, and in the play, my character's just spoken about. There's, he doesn't have any lines. He doesn't have any words. So and essentially, I got to like originate this, this character, which was kind of cool. Yeah. And, and, and it was a straight offer. He was like, I really want you to play this part. I want you to, be, to come do this. And I was like, oh, and it's in Ireland? Like, okay, sure. That sounds amazing. And it was. It was amazing. I had never been to Ireland. Uh, it definitely made me want to go back. Uh, nine out of 10 people that watch this movie are like, I want to go to Ireland immediately. It's like, cause it really does. He represents, and it's, you know, it's getting kind of like a little blowback mostly from the Irish. Cause they, they like nothing more than complaining about 
depictions of them of themselves kind of like people from boston i was gonna um, say that remember <laughs> boston is it comes from ireland and England. Yeah, there's a lot of there's a lot of shared dna there yeah. um but uh then they begrudgingly love it so it's kind of like it, it comes full circle they wouldn't it wouldn't be good unless they complained about it that's that's my take um but the you know the irish are like oh it's you you're this is like you're telling this weird fairy tale not all of us are farmers some of us work for google and you're like yeah fine we're not telling the story about the irish tech boom of the 90s like we're, we're this is not what we're doing we're telling a fable it's a it's a fable and it's a beautifully told like snark free it's just earnest it's a love story and like again like i said like it that sensibility and that kind of emotion and that tone is like the perfect antidote for all of 2020 when it's just everybody's angry and people want to like burn down state houses and you're just like or you could watch a love story and like chill for an hour and a half the irish people are like you think you're better than me (laughs) (laughs) you're not better than me you're not better than me who are you john ham um what was your most fun night in ireland did you and, have a night where you just wandered into the wrong pub and ended up no, making I, I, seven I, I, friends was, or anything? There was stuff? never like, well, yeah, that happened everywhere. Like, the, yeah. it, it really, it really is. Again, it sounds like a cliche or it sounds like a stereotype, but it's just people are friendly. Yeah, and especially in pubs, and especially when the music's playing, and everybody's like, that's what they're there for. They're there for the commun- community experience. They're there for the thing. And again, it feels like it was a hundred years ago because you're looking around or I'm remembering being in a place where there's 65 people singing, drinking, breathing in each other's faces. Like, yeah, I hope we get to do that again soon. But like, it was so lovely. Like Krasinski came over, um, because Emily is his wife and they brought the kids and the whole thing. And, and the producers would hang out and John would come out and it was just, everybody was, so nice there was no like hollywood nonsense there was no you know crazy it was just first of all we were in a town of i don't know a thousand people balana it's Mm. this eensy little town and there was sort of one pub and it was the owner was there and bartending and you know his uh his wife would come in like it was just it was so friendly and family and lovely and welcoming and irish so you have to go because you're going to do 400 other interviews. You're coming on the rewatchables, though. You okay. promised me. Yeah. I'd we'll do to. a movie because now, now you have a little time. Plus, you're in LA and it's a pandemic. I've got nothing but time. You'll have time. What's your next What's your next big project? Is it Fletch or is it something else? Fletch will hopefully go in the springtime, maybe May of 2021. Hopefully, there will be in a different mask situation by then. Um, the next thing I'm doing is. Um, you know, Top Gun comes out in June, hopefully. I know, but you filmed that like 10 years ago. <laughs> I know, it's so crazy. Um, the next thing I'm doing, though, is uh, a small film up in Vancouver um, that's an independent that, you know, hopefully people will see somehow. But it's a little psychological thriller that's... Oh, got, I like psychological like kind thrillers. Of, it, it's kind of like uh, got a lot of shared DNA with uh, being John Malkovich in some mm. ways. So it's not being John Hamm. That's not what it is. But it's it's. Who was your Top Gun character? My my call sign. Yeah, what was it? Cyclone. Can you say it? I I just did. Cyclone. Yeah. Cyclone. Did you get to pick that, or they told you no, your cyclone? They give it to you. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> how how would, are you like the who are you in Top Gun? Like uh, without giving up too much away, are you are you on I'm Maverick's not- side or are you anti Maverick? You know, eventually everyone's on Maverick's side. Okay, good. Uh, but I, you know, I'm I'm kind of the boss. I run the I run the air wing. I'm the air boss. So it's kind of you know, it's a uh, I'm the authority figure to which Maverick bristles. I'm outraged that this isn't out yet. Like, why can't Netflix just be like, fuck it and pay $500 million and just show it on December 23rd? Like, we all wouldn't watch Top Gun. What are you doing, Netflix? You have more money than God. I will tell you, you will absolutely love this movie. Of course I will. What are you talking about? I've been waiting for this forever. 
It is a visual high five. Like it is exactly what you think it's going to be. They showed it to us. Like we all went to Paramount and we had to sit, you know, 15 feet apart in a a dark movie theater with masks on. And I was like, I know what happens in the movie. And I was like, jaw to the floor. It's so, Uh. the plane stuff is so cool. I can't even tell you. And, And it's, there's, it's all real. Like these are all planes that are mm. actually being flown around. That's why it took forever to shoot because you had a clear day and you know that you're still like managing eighty million dollar aircraft that are owned by the taxpayers. So it's there's a lot of uh, hoops to jump through, but um, it's awesome. I, I cannot wait for people to see it. It's I'm outraged that it's not out. Come on, Netflix. Plus, like I have like a ton of Glenn Powell stock. That I'm just, it's like having rookie cards of Mahomes or something. I'm just kind of waiting, <laughs> waiting for well, the mean, cards to go up. But come on, Powell's like blowing up. He's Mr. Netflix, isn't he? He's like Mr. Long. I know, Kong. but that Top Gun, this was going to be it. This was going to be like his I'm, Mahomes. You know I'm, not wor- I'm not worried for Glenn. I think he's good. You're not worried for Powell? He's, nah, he's I mean, good. He's just fine. <laughs> All right. Um, I'm making you come on the rewatchables in the next Do couple it. months. Let's pick a fun one. Good to see you. Likewise, good luck Powell. with the movie. It's Thanks, out. Man. It's out already, by the way. Go. Yeah, people can get out of Apple or whatever. Go, go stream it. All right. Bye, him. Later.